So today we are going to begin with uh, the next module. This is basically a, a module where we would be uh, putting two, three uh, different different topics together. Uh, usually, uh, you know, if you go for the curriculum of uh, most of the universities, you would realize that these topics are discussed separately. Uh, here we would be first talking about stress, then we would be talking about uh, post traumatic stress, then we will go to resilience, then we will go to coping. Okay. Uh, so, these are the four broad topics that we would be uh, covering as part of this module. All of them uh, know, can be discussed as a separate module altogether. Okay. Uh, but, uh, the reason why we are putting all of them together is that uh, we are again trying to uh, uh, draw a continuum and try to understand that uh, there are certain uh, life circumstances which leads to certain ends. Okay. And from uh, adjustment viewpoint, is it that uh, you know, there is uh, a possibility of one understanding the continuum, this is how uh, you know, the situation leads uh, somebody to. Two, to explore the possibility that is there still a possibility of coming back. Three, we are trying to, we will also try to make a distinction, know that is it that uh, up to this level it is uh, still manageable and beyond this it uh, you know, proceeds towards uh, a situation where uh, more of clinical interventions are needed. So, that is the reason we are putting all of them together. Therefore, what we would do is that we will start with stress, uh, we will uh, initially talk about uh, the gamut of uh, symptoms, the way it is manifested uh, in human responses. Then uh, we will also look at uh, know some, <coughs> <coughs> then we will also look at the biochemical regulation of a stress. We look at two important uh, syndromes, okay, what is called as uh, the general adaptation syndrome, popularly called as gas and then the burnout syndrome, what is popularly called as BOSS. Okay. Uh, but once we cover this part of the stress, we will also uh, look at uh, the situation where the stress reactions manifested by individuals could become extremely intense in nature. Okay. And that is where uh, we would uh, know, uh, talk about something that is usually not talked about with respect to stress, rather it is talked about when people talk about disorders. Okay. So, uh, we are not interested in uh, understanding a human behavior with respect to disorders, rather we are more interested in understanding human behavior with respect to uh, the point of origin, the starting point to the gradual increment in the intensity of the symptoms. Okay. And because we would also be looking at the uh, other end of the spectrum, therefore, we would be looking at some of the symptoms which are actually part of stress symptoms, but because of the gravity of the symptoms, they are considered as disorders. Okay. So, the end of uh, the discussion on stress would be on uh, acute stress disorder, where stress is no more uh, something that can be managed on one's own, rather you need a proper clinical intervention. Okay. After we complete this part of stress, then we would move to post traumatic stress. Uh, you remember uh, some time back we had talked about the fact that there is still a, a debate in psychology uh, that whether post traumatic stress should be classified as a disorder or it should not be classified as a disorder. Okay. If you look at uh, the initial proposition when PTSD was included in uh, the clinical uh, categorization of disorders, there it was clearly stated that this is a disorder. Even uh, we would look at uh, know, uh, the diagnostic criteria, which is uh, actually you know, taken from uh, the diagnostic and statistical manual. Uh, so, it is exactly how, uh, how uh, worldwide this disorder is supposed to be identified. Okay. We would look at that, 
but then we would also look at the emerging view point which says uh, which gives an argument uh, that PTSD should not be considered as a disorder. We would not go into this debate at length, but I will I just want you to know that this is an ongoing debate right now. Once we complete PTSD, we would move to the positive dimension of post traumatic stress, means uh, there is a possibility that say if uh, 100 people they experience a traumatic uh, event in life, okay, it is not that all of them become susceptible to post traumatic stress. Okay. Rather in fact, we will also see some of the ep uh, epidemiological data which suggests that only a small percentage becomes uh, know, susceptible to PTSD. Okay. A larger chunk rather evolves as a much better human being. Okay. So, that is the positive reflection of a traumatic experience. This is referred to as post traumatic growth. Okay. So, after we complete our discussion on uh, PTSD, then we will move to PTG, post traumatic growth. There also we would look at uh, know, two different models. Okay. Third model is just a uh, cursory type of a thing. So, we will just superficially touch the third model, but two models we would really you know, look into them at length. Once we complete PTSD, then we would move to uh, the inbuilt capacity of uh, the individuals to bounce back in uh, an adversity, what is called as resilience. So, we will uh, devote some time to resilience and then of course, the ability of a human being to finally, fight back and come uh, forth, what is uh, referred to as coping. Okay. So, that would be the whole uh, you know, spectrum of discussion as part of this module. Usually, uh, stress is looked upon with respect to demanding life situations. Okay, which an individual considers difficult enough to handle. So, basically it is your uh, subjective interpretation that the situation that you are encountering is uh, know, so difficult that you have extreme problem in terms of handling it. Okay. Another interpretation that we provide to a stressful situation is that it exerts certain demand on our physical resources, our psychological resources as well as on our emotional resources. Okay. So, a time comes when you feel you are physically incapable of uh, know, still continuing with uh, this process, when you realize that you are psychologically fatigued, okay. uh, you do not have the strength to come forward with an appropriate response okay. and even emotionally you feel that you are drained. Okay. So, you do not show the level of emotional involvement okay, uh, that one is uh, expecting from you in that type of a situation. Okay. And it is the nature and the intensity of the situation that decides whether situ this situation would be understood by you, would be accepted by you as a normal situation or would it be interpreted as a stressor. Okay. So, a stressor would be a situation that induces stress reaction in you. Now, what is very interesting is that a stressful situations can have positive outcomes, it can also have negative outcomes. Usually, what we uh, usually talk about in uh, most of our discussions is the negative outcome of stress. We usually do not focus on the positive corollaries of uh, the stressful situations. Uh, Hans Selye was a psychologist uh, who uh, worked extensively on uh, stress and little later we will come to one of the popular models given by him. He said that you can look at stressful situations, okay, stressful conditions and you can bifurcate them into two heads. Okay. You have eustress uh, and distress. Okay. So, stressful conditions that finally yields positive outcomes. Okay. Those stressful situations, he said that these are your eustress. But if conditions put you uh, high demand on you and it you know, uh, challenges your ability to cope with it and finally, it leads you to a direction where the outcome is negative, then this situation, this condition becomes distressful. Okay. 
Now, according to Hansele, the difference between eustress and distress depends on the real or imagined experiences as well expectations of the individual. Okay. Means, whether you would consider a particular situation to be stressful or not, okay, that would primarily depend on your real experience. Okay. It could also depend on your fabricated uh, no, uh, imagination. So, you do not have the real experience, you do not have the real rational ground for uh, making that situation, considering that situation to be stressful, but you fantasize certain things and based on your imagination, you consider this situation to be extremely stressful. Okay. And the third factor that would also play a role is, what actually you expect from uh, yourself in that very situation okay. and how capable you feel that you would be able to meet that expectation or uh, your uh, feeling that you will fall short of the expectation in that very situation. That will finally, uh, make you decide whether to consider this situation to be uh, eustress or distress. Okay. So, this is what Hansel says. Many situations you can uh, realize. You know, for example, uh, you have to prepare for your mid semester examination. Right now, you all have gone through it. Now, there is a stress that is built up within you. You realize that this is the date, and you also realize that you are not so well prepared for certain set of uh, uh, subjects and certain uh, courses and therefore, you put extra effort. Okay. You compromise with your uh, leisure time, you compromise with your sleep time, okay. you compromise with the time which you otherwise uh, invest in the wing talking to friends. Okay. All those things you compromise with and there is an extra emphasis on the level of preparation that you expect that you should certainly have to face the mid semester examination. That type of a condition, okay, where you are looking at certain imaginary experience, no? you do not have the real experience of this mid semester examination, but you have experience of certain examinations. So, you know what examinations mean, you also know uh, finally, what is expected out of uh, your participation in the examination process okay, and you have certain expectation from you. This finally, makes you decide that whether uh, no, I should uh, cut from certain uh, engagements and dedicate more and more towards studies or there is no need for it. Okay. And therefore, you realize that if you are still you know, compromising with your uh, investment of time and energy in other activities and investing it into studies and you feel great, I am now well prepared for the examination. The situation although you experience that uh, stress, but that stress did not lead to any negative outcome. You experienced it, you had you know uh, redesigned your uh, time and energy and based on uh, you know this withdrawal from certain engagements and reinvestment in uh, studies okay, made you very nicely handle the situation, cope this, uh, with the situation. Okay you got good grades and this stress has finally, uh, led to some positive outcome. Imagine situation like uh, you are uh, uh, say, you are supposed to put an exhibit uh, in tech Okay, and you invest your entire time and energy for making that thing come into place. Okay. The stress that you undergo is tremendous. Okay but it does not lead to a negative outcome, it leads to a positive outcome. So, there could be many such situations in life, where you realize that the final product of the stressful situation was positive, it was not negative. Okay. And this is what Hans Selye considered, that these are useless in life. Okay. You derive positive outcome out of it. Problem comes when you have uh, no conditions, where you have your own experience to say that it is really demanding and you uh, are not competent to handle it or uh, you ex uh, consider that uh, no, I cannot meet the expectation or 
you imagine certain things and that makes you uh, know finally come forward with uh, few or lot many negative uh, you know uh, outcomes out of the imaginary uh, you know ideas that you are trying to evolve okay and then such situations becomes extremely stressful okay it could start from small things in life and go up to much 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 bigger things in life I will start with the smaller events where you could have difference uh, between individuals and then we would uh, know go to the extreme of it. Couple of years back, two, three years back, uh, some of us uh, decided to uh, go to the city for dinner okay. and uh, one of the members in our group said that uh, uh, no, he suggested a restaurant and when we asked that uh, when did you come here and he gave a very interesting explanation. He said that uh, no, I had come to Kanpur Central to board a train. Uh, my train was declared 5 hours late. Okay. So, I thought what to do? There is there was no point waiting on the railway station for 5 hours. Okay. So, I went to watch a movie. Okay. And halfway I thought what is the point in watching such a bad movie. So, I went to this restaurant which was nearby, I had my food. Okay. Then I came to the station, boarded the train and went to wherever I was supposed to go. I thought fantastic. Okay. Uh, I did reflect on my own self and I thought that if I was told that your train is 5 hours late, okay, I would have still sat on the platform. Okay. At max, uh, no, go to the uh, waiting room and then engage yourself mentally into some activity. But I could have never ever dared to know go to a theater which is nearby, watch a movie halfway, go to a restaurant, have some food, again come back to the station. Uh, for me, it was impossible. But I do admire people who think like this, no, and who really execute it. And then suddenly another thing came to my mind, uh, so a couple of years back, two of us, me and uh, one of my colleague, both of us were coming back okay, after uh, trip abroad and we were uh, in one of the hotels which was very, very close to uh, the New Delhi railway station. We had our train in the night, Shram Shakti. So, we were very <laughs> relaxed, we had our dinner and uh, then we decided that because we have sufficient time, so we will even take a nap and then uh, just 20-25 minutes before the departure time, we will go to the station. And uh, I think around 7 o'clock, this train was uh, around midnight, no, 11.50 in the night. So, <clears throat> around 7 o'clock, this colleague of mine tells me that uh, I think you should call the reception and settle the bills. Okay. I told him that no, I would settle it when we check out. Okay. So, maybe in between we might need something, who knows. So, we will settle the bill at the time of checking out. He said, okay. again after 10 minutes, again after 10 minutes, <laughs> Okay, he will remind me that no, uh, you should settle the bill, and we had sufficient time. No, from the hotel, if say consider that everything was there was a complete traffic jam, and if we would have started moving on our foot, then also in uh, ten minutes time we would have reached the station. We were so close to it, okay, and still two hours in advance. This colleague of mine tells me that no, no, no we should go to the station now, okay. Finally, I had to surrender one hour before time went to the station uh, and then in the train I asked him that uh, no, just look back uh, no, right from 7 o'clock in the evening when you started telling me that I should be settling the bill to boarding the train uh, and he said that yes, I am like that. If I have to board a train in the night, right from the morning uh, no, I get ready and then I will see clock thousand times, I will uh, no, do this, I will do that. This is the amount of you know, discomfort that you generate. You do not know that this time how pleasant or unpleasant the journey is going to be. Perhaps 
you had some uncomfortable journeys in the past or you had both type of experiences comfortable as well as uncomfortable journey, but then you imagine this can happen that can happen even that can happen okay. and you keep on keep on you know uh, creating a pile in and around you so high okay, that finally you realize that the pressure that you are putting on your own self okay, uh, becomes too much. The reason I am giving these examples are okay, same situation boarding a train, okay, but then somebody who is a real experience, somebody who is imagined experience okay, and expectation no, you find completely people in two different directions and uh, I would consider my own uh, uh, know, thought at that time of course, not going towards the extremes, but it was still know, more like say uh, standing still on the station. Now, human beings vary in those terms like this, no, where each situation there would be different interpretation. Somebody who might consider the situation to be very, very stressful, the other person might not consider it to be that. I do not remember the name of the movie, but once I had watched it, uh, um, uh, tell me the name of. Uh, an actor not so uh, well known, but for acting he is known, but not a big name like the stars, uh, some Pandey or something, the fat man, little uh, shorter in height, little plump, no, 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 not Saurav Shukla, not Saurav Shukla, I am not getting his name, some Pandey most probably okay, and Neha Dhupia. Okay. Ah, Dilli Chalo, yeah, Chalo Dilli, I do not know, is it Dilli Chalo or Chalo Dilli, what is the name of the movie, but one of these names, okay. <coughs> there is this, uh, have you watched this movie? No. There is a, you know, a beautiful plot, I, I liked it, I do not know whether you would like it or not. Uh, basically, it shows that uh, this woman uh, is uh, trying to, he, she has to board a flight, she has to go to Delhi. And there is this man also who has to board the same flight and to go to Delhi, okay. <coughs> and they had tough time managing the traffic in Bombay, and uh, uh, finally uh, they managed to board the plane. And because of certain reasons, instead of landing in Delhi, the flight lands in Jaipur. Okay, it happens several times. No? <laughs> so the flight lands there, and. Uh, the reason why I am uh, taking this example is that uh, there are certain uh, situations in that movie where the lead actress will repeatedly say, oh, oh God, it is terrible, okay, unbearable and the actor says, to isme, isme kya badi baat hai? Okay, he repeatedly throughout the movie, he keeps on repeatedly saying, to isme kaun si badi baat hai? Okay, and the moment he says, you know, isme kaun si badi baat hai, once, twice it was okay. This lady gets irritated, no? That what else do you want, no? Kitna hone par you would say that it's badi baat, no? Because every time you say it's my konsi badi baat hai, and it goes to all types of extreme, no? Uh, they board a local train, they have a pickpocketing, uh, they don't have money, uh, they have they uh, get in a small time hotel, uh, uh, then there is a curfew in the city. All types of things happen. But the best part was the end of the movie, where uh, this lady along with her husband who was uh, in the armed forces, uh, he comes to Jaipur to not Jaipur, somewhere between Jaipur and Delhi uh, in the road and then uh, this officer comes and takes her wife back to Delhi. This man also accompanies uh, no? and then uh, he gets down at one of the locations in Delhi and uh, this uh, husband wife pair they move and then the wife says that uh, uh, she was supposed to travel abroad and she says that I am not travelling abroad, so we will celebrate the birthday here and the husband reminds him that would not you like to invite this man with whom you had shared this fantastic journey. And then she comes back, searches the house of this man okay, uh, to realize that uh, 
her wife was uh, sorry his wife was completely paralyzed lying on the bed was not able to even speak okay and then uh, this uh, lady says that what you are experiencing in life compared to this all that we experience throughout this journey it is really too small okay so now i can make sense of when you said to isme kaun si badi baat hai now i can make out okay that you have seen so much you uh, know of things in real life that rest all of the events are too you know uh, small uh, compared to this ex life experience okay there are beautiful things no uh, the reason i am talking about that movie with respect to stress i is multi multiple reasons no uh, there is also a sequence in that movie where uh, Uh, this husband goes and says something to the wife that you uh, know uh, somebody has come a guest has come say hello to her and all those things and uh, then he goes and brings the water and something for her and then this guest asks her that uh, what's uh, what has happened to your wife and she say and he says that uh, my wa- my wife ka she is completely paralyzed and she can't even speak uh and then that lady asks but you were talking to your wife and he says yes she can't talk no but i can talk no so i continue talking to her the reason i am giving such examples are that you have extreme situations of course it's a uh, cinematographic representation of the event i don't know but i'm sure there would be many many people uh, you know in this world who would have similar type of life experience no but it sends uh, a message to you that even when you have an extremely stressful situation in life where you are handling a patient who is very close to a terminally uh, ill situation okay you are still you uh, know very happily managing the whole uh, sequence of life no and the rest of the events of your life you enjoy like anything okay so Uh, that is what you uh, know eustress and distress primarily means so basically it is uh, your real life experiences your imagined experience as well as what you expect of yourself in that very situation okay that finally makes you decide whether you would make that condition that situation uh, you would consider it stressful for yourself or not if you look at uh, the symptoms of stress what we are doing is that we are classifying into uh, them into three categories no the physical symptoms the symptoms uh, which are reflected in terms of behavioral manifestation and then the psychological reactions that we see in terms of physical symptoms of stress uh, one can experience tension in the muscles okay and that's the reason why you would realize that people who are under tremendous stress okay they reportedly uh, repeatedly they report of uh, you know certain aches okay and their aches are very interestingly they are localized in certain parts of the body so usually you will find people saying that uh, you know this region no they have ache in the back and chronic aches okay uh then uh, the lower uh, foot muscle okay so there are selected muscles of the body usually where people report that you know uh, they are facing uh, muscle tension but even otherwise also no in a stressful state one can have uh, no multiple muscles which can uh, no uh, be become tense including something like uh, say uh, clenching of the stomach muscles okay we do not have voluntary control over the movement of our stomach muscles okay but in the stressful state uh, even the muscles of the stomach also the clench okay and that's the reason you have sometimes you no know, butterfly sensation in the stomach there might be change in the eating habit okay but change also can be again you know um, both ways either you start eating very little compared to what you used to eat or you start eating more and more compared to what you used to eat okay so there could be an under or an over eating type of uh, uh, phenomena and that's the reason why you would realize that uh, after overcoming the state of uh, uh, especially depression many people become plump because you keep on keep on consuming food without realizing 
okay, that you did not need it. Okay. So, you are doing something meanwhile you are still you know continuously eating something and you overeat and finally, at the end of uh, that state you realize that gradually you have accumulated more and more of weight. There could be bowel upset. So, uh, earlier say if uh, morning the moment you leave your bed you used to go to the toilet it could be delayed okay, or you could go multiple times to the toilet. So, complete bowel upset can be there. There could be repeated uh, episodes of headaches <coughs> and even if you read uh, headaches the type of headaches okay, there is something called uh, you know, tension headache. Uh, that basically it has to do with uh, the contraction refraction of the muscles here okay, which leads finally to the headache. Okay. There could be back aches, complete uh, sense of restlessness okay. and you realize that at the end of the day you are exhausted, you are fatigued, okay. you are drained out of your physical energy. But in the state of a stress gradually what happens that most of the time you leave the bed early in the morning and again you feel that you are you know completely 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 running out of your energy. So, irrespective of the time of the day you realize that you do not have energy at all. Then we come to the behavioral manifestation, one might have a difficulty concentrating on something. So, you are watching movie and you realize that uh, you know you heard the dialogues, but then you do not remember what the actor or the actress on the screen right now said. So, you constantly keep on keep on shifting uh, between channels. Okay. You are trying to read books and you keep on keep on looking at the font, but you are not able to uh, recollect what you are actually reading. Okay. So, complete uh, no problem in terms of concentrating on any uh, event. Decreased duration of the sleep okay, that could be there. So, instead of say if you used to sleep for 6 hours, 7 hours, now it has reduced to 5 hours or there could be repeated uh, no, uh, waking sessions during the sleep that is the sleep disturbances. No? So, you sleep for some time and say uh, half an hour, 1 hour and suddenly you wake up. Again you remained awakened for say half an hour you feel drowsy and again you sleep again after 2 3 hours you wake up so a repeated you know uh, disturbance in the sleep that could also be there one can also report uh, difficulty in terms of recollecting things from memory okay say ha huh, i remember something had happened uh, right now i am not able to recollect it so that is uh, you know the difficulty in terms of uh, recollecting something from your memory okay there could also be an increase in the clumsiness level. Clumsiness level would mean uh, that earlier if I used to say for example, I have to go to the bag and put all these stuffs there. Earlier if I used to do it with precision, okay, now when I do it I still I am able to do it, but then may be that sometime the laptop hits the bag harder or my finger you know, uh, gets stuck in the zip. Okay or I scratch my uh, skin, I rub it against uh, some surface means that accident proneness in my day to day behavior increases. Earlier if I had to take a seat somewhere here, I would very easily manage to go, but now when I move sometime I hit another chair. Okay. Uh, sometime when I walk uh, I suddenly you know uh, uh, happen to uh, know, mismanage my steps on the staircase. Okay. So, that is the increase in the clumsiness level. Okay. There could also be uh, in certain cases you know people uh, uh, in uh, uh, whom you would find uh, that their intake of uh, cigarette, alcohol, okay, drugs that can also increase. Most important thing that you realize that this person who is under stress would start withdrawing from the activities where he or she used to earlier get engaged himself uh, or herself in. Okay. So, say earlier if uh, every evening this boy or this girl would uh, go for games, 
now even if you invite him or her that okay okay we are going for to the sports ground join me okay and this person gives you one or the other excuse but doesn't join you okay so you, you start withdrawing from your regular engagements in the worldly activities okay and most importantly uh, if you invite the person twice or thrice are chalo 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 yaar okay the person becomes irritated no? so you cannot manage even when small small changes in your uh, uh, life circumstances and you easily become uh, irritated okay those are the behavioral manifestations then we come to the psychological reactions suddenly the overall uh, you know manifestation of anger increases okay so you tend to be very easily uh, angry there could be a possibility of increase in the level of anxiety fear confusion as well as worry okay but very interestingly when uh, you know these people turn angry in the state of stress when you turn angry you realize that uh, you suddenly burst into tears while shouting at other person so say i am angry i shout at you but while i am shouting suddenly you know i have uh, you know Uh, change in my voice i have uh, tears in my eyes okay so great degree of tearfulness comes okay frequent emotional outbursts no so it's not only anger but other types of emotions also no frequently uh, one sees outbursts one can also have ruminative thoughts and overall decrease in self confidence you understand what is ruminative thought uh say if i ask you uh, that just look back at your uh, past experiences of this life and uh, overall uh, what would you say how life has been for you you would find two sets of people people who would usually know selectively choose negatively oriented situations and say that it has been really tough but theek hai i managed but i don't know there are many things happened that should not have happened one set the other set who would say um, it's a mixed bag of experience but uh, overall good and when you ask that say uh, if you scratch some details so uh, what were the odds in the mixed bag and then you say you know um, i remember i had a very good friend and uh, later on uh, for certain reasons we developed some misunderstanding now when i look back i think i should have clarified the doubts okay these are two distinct set of people somebody who looks back interprets the situation okay what he or she is doing is is adopting a reflective thought you reflect upon your life experience okay so reflection would be that you take a very balanced view point of the life uh, we consider that uh, no life will cannot be only and only positively oriented for somebody okay it will always have uh, no mixture but then will you look at it okay you reflect upon it you uh, do not feel that uh, life had really asked you to pay a heavy price for whatever uh, you have attained okay and overall you show certain degree of uh, acceptability certain degree of uh, no um, um, confidence that finally see i have been able to attain this level okay these are the indicators of your reflective thoughts the example that i took that even something if i scratch and say that so uh, share some of the negative experiences when you said that life was a mixed bag of experience for you and you say that i had a good friend you no know, my school days we were very good friends you no know, and during our coaching period for je we developed some misunderstanding and now we do not even talk to each other okay since last 3 years i haven't talked to him you reflect back and you say that i still uh, regret missing a good friend like him this is a reflection 
But what happens instead of reflective thoughts in the stage of stress you have ruminative thoughts and ruminative is the earlier example that I was giving now that you selectively choose the negative experiences of life and you say that you know I did not had a good sleep that last night, in the morning I did not feel waking up, when I went to the bathroom no, the pressure of water was little slow and when I came to T201 uh, even uh, the person who was supposed to do the recording was also late, okay, because of him the whole thing was delayed. Since morning life has not been exactly the way I have interpreted it right now, but what I have done I have selectively, selectively chosen only, only negative things and then I have put them all together. Many people in their life, they what they do usually they will select you know the negativities of their life experiences, they will stack them together and to say how painful life has been for him or her. And during the stage of stress this is usually what happens. No? You do not take a balanced view of the life, rather you t selectively choose only the ruminative thoughts, thoughts which will further make you stressed, okay, thoughts that will further make you depressed. So, I am not only stressed out of the fact that I have to give my mid semester examination, but my good friend Saurav also is not prepared well for the exam. Okay. Uh, I think there is some sort of here, no? but this is a hypothetical example that I am taking. Okay. Then I say, oh, I think Vinod has also not prepared, and Ajit has also not prepared. So, I collectively take uh, you know, the burden of all of them to make myself more and more stressed. To say that it is not only the instructor will tell me that you have underscored, it is not that my parents will tell me that you have underscored, but they will tell me that all your friends have underscored. Okay. And therefore, all of you are doing uh, something other than academics. Okay. These are no ruminative thoughts. So, in the stage of uh, stress you would realize that instead of reflective thoughts, one uh, recollects more and more of ruminative thoughts. Any question? Correct. Uh, then we come to the biochemical regulation. Uh, but I think you know we have only 5 minutes left. So, we would not move to biochemical regulation the reason being uh, that again next day I will have to continue with it for long. So, therefore, we will uh, know uh, return back to the symptoms of a stress rather than going to biochemical regulation. Next day when we meet we will uh, go ahead with the biochemical regulation, uh, but there is an interesting uh, know, uh, phenomena in stress that many of our uh, uh, what you call uh, behavioral engagements, they can easily help us manage many of these uh, you know, symptoms. Okay. Life would give some stressful experience to everybody that is truth of this life, but out of whatever life gives to you the stressful conditions, many of them can still be managed. Okay. They can still be managed either with uh, the uh, capabilities that one oneself has or uh, with the help of the group resources. Okay. But stressful events can certainly be managed, but if one realizes okay, uh, that one has developed one of them or a group of them, usually it will be a group. No? So, you will have some of physical, some of psychological, some of behavioral that group. And if your near and dear ones tell you that why are you, you know, so irritated nowadays, no, you very easily get irritated. Earlier you used to be a, you used to be a very pleasant friend of mine. Okay. Usually our usual tendency is to snub the friend and say come on, come on, always I was like this. Okay. Uh, there is a beauty that if somebody uh, tells you something, somebody gives you a feedback about your behavior, okay, do respond back, there is no harm in responding back, but just wait for some time, take time okay, and then come forward with the response. But that uh, no latency period that you are providing to yourself will at least uh, no help you gauge whether 
your reaction which was given by a real really true friend because he or she has told you uh, what change he or she has seen in you okay there should be certain degree of acceptance okay and if you show this type of a latency period this latency period will allow you to accept things at least to certain degree you might not accept it completely because you are under tremendous stress but at least you will be able to digest a bit of it okay that will also allow you to manage your anger once we complete uh, our discussion on this module then the next module we would be uh, referring to uh, anger there and one interesting technique even in anger management is what is called as 1 2 3 technique 1 2 3 technique is basically i feel angry i feel shouting at you but then before i shout i start counting 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 3 2 1 1 2 3 3 2 1 okay so you count it couple of times no and uh, because you are in the state of anger so clench your fist and then you say 1 2 3 3 2 1 1 2 3 3 2 1 and you would realize that gradually part of the anger subsides okay this type of uh, no exercise where you provide a latency period to yourself before responding to somebody okay helps you both ways no it helps you in your stressful state it also helps you manage your anger okay the great thing when we come to anger they will realize that the great thing also is that you do not become a person who is considered impulsive by others okay but do no do not delay the response also too much otherwise people would consider no that you are a tube light who takes a longer time to process the information and then to respond accordingly okay so we'll end up here